Hello, in this video we will be taking a look at the autosomal DNA predicted phenotype traits and GD match results of a uh, middle Neolithic woman from Ireland who was an Irish Neolithic farmer uh, similar to the other European Neolithic farmers such as LBK in Germany and Hungary similar to the to a certain extent similar to the Anatolian Neolithic farmers and these people are extinct um, they did not really live a cultural or a sort of an ethnic impact on modern Irish people. However, they did leave a slight genetic impact because Irish people nowadays have uh, up to 40% of ancestry from people like this woman. This is her predicted phenotype with my Noshakotu. She's predicted to have brown eyes, snub-shaped nose and non-red uh, hair. Uh, my Noshakotu is not really giving her a prediction for hair shape. However, uh, in all likelihood, she had very dark hair because she did not even have BH1, did not have blue eye haplotype 1, which means also no BH2, which means not not any chance of blonde hair. So the snipper free prediction, for example, where she's predicted to have blonde hair, uh, completely completely wrong. The YSEC prediction where she's, you can see in the image, she's predicted to have blonde hair. Once again, completely wrong. Uh, definitely had very dark eye color and hair color. Uh, my Akiat V2 is kind of more precise and according to Akiat V2 she definitely doesn't have blue eyes. You can see the likelihood of blue eyes here is 0.7% so definitely no blue eyes, definitely very dark eye color indeed. Uh, and she's got some genotypes for lighter eye color such as you know some genotypes in OCA2 um, and SLC2044 but really uh, because the BH1, because she doesn't have BH1, that's kind of the big dog here uh, without BH1. She's not having any kind of blue eyes, not a chance. Now moving on to her GD match results. This is what she scores with Eurogenes K13. Um, a very like pure result. When you see a result from Eurogenes K13 that only scores three categories and it's a West Eurasian result, it's always very special because you don't see this like ever. Uh, but she's only scoring North Atlantic, West Mediterranean, and East Mediterranean components. Interesting that she's scoring East Mediterranean, kind of unexpected. Uh, there's some maybe affinities between European Neolithic farmers and uh, like whoever East Mediterranean component peaks in. I think it's Jordanians. So there's some affinities between European Neolithic farmers and actual people of the Middle East. Uh, which you can see with the East Mediterranean component with the Oracle. She's getting more of this mixture of Sardinian plus Basque. And this is what she scores with MDLP K11. She's scoring, she's not even scoring any Caucasus. Look at that. She's not scoring any EHG, which is really kind of the Caucasus component. Uh, she's not scoring any Iran Mesolithic. She's scoring nothing from these kind of Eastern um, West Asian groups. Uh, with the Oracle, she's closest to Irish late Neolithic, but also to various other farmers. Various other European farmers are also very close to her. Um, because all the European farmers are really similar to each other. This is what she scores with Harappa World, uh, with this kind of, with this oracle, with this calculator. Uh, kind of high Northeast European. 22% Northeast European is maybe on the higher end for farmers. And because of this high Northeast European, she's actually closest to Basques and not to Sardinians. With most of these calculators, she's closest to Basque, to, to Sardinians. But with this one, uh, with this one, she's closest to Basques. Uh, very interesting stuff. This is what she scores with Pond DNA LK12. You can see she's scoring quite a lot of Near East. Kind of surprising here, but 29% European Hunter Gatherer. So she did have European Hunter Gatherer admixture. Uh, although I think Neolithic, Anatolian Neolithic farmers also score a little bit of European Hunter Gatherer. So not, she's, she doesn't have 29% European HG admixture. Maybe it's more like 14 or 15, but it is there. Uh, with the Oracle, she's closest to various European farmers. And this is what she scores with Pond DNA LK10. A very interesting result. She's she's not scoring any CHG. And the only two components that she's really scoring that are big are ENF, which is early Neolithic farmer, not European Neolithic farmer, not even Anatolian Neolithic farmer. This is a very southern component that seems to peak in Arabs, so take that as you want. Uh, but a very pure result, and with the Oracle, she's closest to Sardinians, getting model as a mixture of Sardinian plus various uh, other ethnicities. And this is what she scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. Uh, you can see she's only really scoring West European Hunter Gatherer and Natufian, uh, not scoring any A and E. Oh, well, 3% A and E is pretty much nothing. That's less than like even Sardinians. Uh, with the Oracle, she's closest to Sardinians, followed by Europe in Neolithic, followed by Anatolia Neolithic farmers. 
uh, and she's actually getting one of those a mixture of Anatolia and Neolithic farmers plus 15% Mantala or Anatolia and Neolithic plus 14% Western Hunter Gather. So pretty much I was I was pretty much right when I said that she's kind of um, 15 or 14% European Hunter Gatherer plus the rest is Anatolia and Neolithic farmer. She does have a little bit of European Hunter Gatherer admixture. Uh, and she's very West Eurasian, doesn't really have any affinities to Sub-Saharan Africans or East Asians. Uh, just very purely, you know, purely West Eurasian individual. Now let's move on to her traits. We're gonna use my genome analyzer tool to um, look at her traits. This is this is her file, and let's see what she's genotyped for. She's got AA in this comet variation, which leads to a decreased risk of schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. Okay, she's got GG genotype in this MAOA variation, leading to higher MAOA enzyme activity. So think about it: higher MAOA enzyme means uh, quicker breakdown of dopamine means worry or means less dopamine in the system. Uh, so this leads to a decrease in the dopamine levels because the breakdown of dopamine is quicker. So this is kind of like the worry or gene, but uh, except typically the typical worry or gene in this variation is this variation of Comte. Uh, and this is a different gene. This is actually on the X chromosome. This is MAOA. Uh, she's got AA or 2 derived no-go no learner variants in the rd 2 spro pro variation, uh, which causes a significant reduction in the number of D2 dopamine receptor sites in the brain and a reduction in the risk of schizophrenia and an increased likelihood of no-go learner learning, uh, which is the ability to withhold a response when it's not warranted. Uh, among other things, no-go learning is also like um, being able to learn from negative experiences, that's also no-go learning, uh, but it, it is also the ability to withhold a response when it's not warranted. That's the only thing I wrote uh, on this panel. And this AA genotype in the no-go learner variation is actually very stereotypically European. Like, you will not find people outside of Europe with this genotype. This is pretty much stereotypically European genotype. Uh, she's got GG in this variation of DRD2, meaning less dopamine D2 receptors and decreased risk of schizophrenia. Yeah, I've noticed this pattern that with DRD2, every uh, variation that has to do, every variant that has to do with uh, less dopamine D2 receptors and decreased risk of schizophrenia, it's always going to be picking in Europeans. Uh, I'm not sure why this is the case, but it's kind of, this is just kind of how it is. Uh, when it comes to the empathy gene, she's got TT here, which means decreased OXTR expression and lower levels of empathy, as well as higher risk of autism spectrum disorder, and this variation she was not genotyped for. Now, moving on to, well, the final thing here, because everything else is not determined, but moving on to hemochromatosis. Uh, she's got AA genotype in HFE's S65C variation, which means that this individual does not carry any risk variants for hemochromatosis. And this is kind of like the um, the alternative uh, the alternative um, variation for hemochromatosis. The main ones that matter the most are these two, but she's not genotyped for any of these two um, uh, any of these two variations. So we can't really determine that from her file as of yet. Now, thanks for watching my video. You will be able to download her raw genome file in 23andMe format from link, uh, which is in the description. And leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Goodbye. Peace out.